Over the past 30 years, the Mazda MX-5 Miata has become the industry standard for a roadster that offers pure driving fun at a reasonable price. But now, Japanese rival Toyota hopes to challenge the Miata's dominance with a roadster of its own. Hey, I'm Creech, and this is Creech and Cars. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Toyota's all-new roadster, which will probably be called the SFR. The story of the SFR actually starts back in 2015 when the SFR concept debuted at the Tokyo Motor Show. At the time, this was seen as a fairly direct successor to the MR2, and that would still be the case today even though much more time has passed. At the Japan Mobility Show in 2023, Daihatsu revealed the Vision Copen. The production version of the SFR will be a blend of these two concepts. So let's take a closer look at the design. The front end is straightforward and easily recognizable with circular headlights and a large grille. I do prefer the grille on the Daihatsu, but I think the production SFR will look more like Toyota's concept with uh, this sort of gaping hole grille. Toyota is certainly not afraid of going big on the grills, and I don't think this design will be the exception in the lineup. Under the headlights, there are some nice round fog lights to finish out the front end. And the rest of the body lines are mostly rounded, and much less angular than the current Miata. While it is a bit less aggressive looking than the Miata because of this, it doesn't look super cutesy either. The original SFR was a yellow coupe, with a black roof that sort of gave the appearance of it being a convertible, but I think the production SFR will actually be a convertible like the Vision Copen, as this would increase the size of the market for the car. The base model would probably be a soft top with the optional hard top as the sort of top trim, like what Mazda does with the Miata. There's a nice SFR badge on the front quarter panel, and the wheels look nice and sporty as well, despite being on the smaller side. Here you can expect to have 16 or 17 inch rims. The back end maintains a clean, rounded look with a large black bumper and a single tailpipe. The taillights mirror the front end with the circular design. For those who crave more performance over the base model, Toyota may also offer a GRMN version of the SFR. Here's a glimpse of what that model might look like. The GRMN would come with a body kit to overhaul the aerodynamics that includes canards, a front splitter, and side skirts, along with an exclusive hood and diffuser out back. Also on the rear, there's a large wing and a center mounted exhaust. Heading inside, the SFR concept had a simple driver focused interior that's pretty similar to the current Daihatsu Copen that is sold in Japan, although the production SFR will be larger than a K car. The gauge cluster puts all the focus on the tachometer that encircles the digital speed readout. The other gauges are smaller vertical lines, but they're still easy to read. There's a center infotainment screen that's pretty small on the concept. Screen sizes have just grown so much over the past decade that it's likely the production infotainment screen will grow to be around 7 to 8 inches. Zooming out from the dash, there's a nice color combo of black with yellow accents and contrast stitching. The seats use an Alcantara-like material, and the door panels are covered in felt, which is pretty unusual, but not necessarily a bad thing. I also like the SFR logo on the seats. There is limited storage inside, and this really is a driver's car, so that would never be a priority for something like this. There are some little door pockets, and you can expect just a few cubic feet of trunk space. Another major feature you can see from the inside is that the SFR concept is equipped with a 5-speed manual transmission. So let's go deeper into the mechanical and performance specs that we could see on the production model. Like I said, the SFR concept had a 5-speed manual, and the current Copen has a 5-speed manual as well, along with the option for a CVT. I think the production version will offer something similar, but without going into deeper discussion on the topic, and for better or worse, we know that the manual transmission is declining in popularity, especially for new cars. So will Toyota even offer a manual transmission for the SFR? Well, the good news here is that Mazda says around 60% of new Miatas are sold with its six-speed manual transmission. So there's definitely enough of a market to offer the SFR with the six-speed manual that is found in the GR86 along with the option for the GR86's quick 6-speed automatic. Many reports are indicating that the SFR will use a 
turbocharged 1.3 liter inline three cylinder, making about 150 horsepower. But I think Toyota might go with the turbocharged 1.6 liter inline three cylinder that is used in the GR Corolla. Toyota is able to crank 300 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque out of this little engine, which is paired with that six speed manual I mentioned earlier. The GR Corolla can do zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds, and it would be quite a bit heavier than the SFR. So theoretically with the same setup, the SFR could be a really quick little car with a zero to 60 time closer to around four and a half seconds. SFR stands for small front engine and real wheel drive. So like I said, this is sort of a successor to the MR2, but unlike the MR2, whatever engine Toyota decides to go with will be mounted in the front. The Toyota SFR is still in early development and it isn't expected to go on sale until late 2025 or into 2026. Reports suggest that Toyota is targeting a base price of around three and a half million yen which is less than $23,000. I think a US spec SFR would start around $26,000 to $27,000. At that price point, the SFR would undercut the Miata, which currently starts at $29,000. The Miata will be the SFR's main competition, of course, so let's see how it would stack up. On paper, the SFR looks like a solid challenge to the Miata standard. While there is a chance that the SFR will be less powerful, I think it's equally likely to have even more power than the Miata, and be quicker as well, all without losing the driving feel that is the ultimate reason people buy cars like this. Another good sign for Toyota is that Car and Driver has ranked the GR86 above the Miata in its list of the best cheap sports cars. At this point in time, there's really only one major issue I can find for the SFR, and that is the size of the market. In the United States at least, convertibles and other small sports cars have been on the decline for some time now. Miata sales have been fairly stagnant, but it struggles to move eight or 9,000 units within a year. While Toyota hasn't been hesitant about selling sports cars in America, which does help keep the brand feeling fresh and energized, the real market for cars like this is in Japan, China, and other surrounding Asian countries. In those areas, the SFR will be able to deliver the analog driving fun at a bargain price to help pull buyers away from the flood of new EVs. So there's everything we know so far about the SFR, Toyota's all new upcoming Roadster. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and check out the rest of the channel for more like this. Also subscribe so you won't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.